Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Dr. Wasachronic and today I will be bringing you episode 2 of Let's Play Oblivion, where we last left off. Iba just got out of the Imperial Prison Sewers and she now has to make her way over to see Joffrey, I believe, who is a monk. So let's go see this guy. It's going to be a nice long walk, so I will most likely cut it out of this because uh, it's a long walk there. So let's get right to this. And it's raining. Okay. A pretty terrible start to the game. You know, with rain. You know, when I first started to play this game, I, for the life of me, couldn't find any kind of a pathway. But it seems like now I've actually found one because I was just having a really, really hard time trying to get up to the Imperial City here. Well, it seems like the people in the Imperial City are fairly rude. Well, that's no surprise to me, considering that when I was playing Elder Scrolls 3, nearly everybody was extremely rude. They were so rude to the point that the Dark Elves would actually hiss at me, like a cat. I'm not sure if that was just an audio error or if they were actually hissing at me. Let's take a look at my character real quick here, try and figure out who Iva actually is here. Obviously a Nord, birth sign is Mage, class is a Nightblade, and I am level 1. Here are my stats. Alteration. I've never really used this very much here. Let's see what we have. Uh, cast spells to breathe or walk on water. Open locks. Shield from physical and magical damage. And alter encumbrance. Alright. And of course you have your destruction, restoration. Acrobatics and light armor. And from what I can tell, so long as I have a light armor shield on me, uh, that actually counts. So that's something that I never knew. Like, I always thought that I had to have on the rough leather boots and cuirass uh, or chest plate, however you want to say that. But you know what, let me drop some stuff here. I obviously cannot drop that since I need to take the Amulet of Kings over to Joffrey. Potions here. Food and ingredients and some stuff that I need to sell. One thing that I will want my character to actually do here is 
be able to use Soul Trap. Um, throughout my history of playing the Elder Scrolls games, I have never once actually used Soul, uh, Soul, uh, Soul Trap. So I'm hoping that in this one I will be able to learn it and actually use it because when it comes to using Azora's star ah butterfly um, in my face in my teeth Ugh. gross but yeah um, I've never actually used Azora's star like ever like not once never in Elder Scrolls 3 never in Elder Scrolls 4 and I don't think I've ever actually had it in Elder in Elder Scrolls 5. So uh yeah, um using a Azora's star will definitely be something new. But here I go. Make sure I'm going the right way. Cora. Yep. That's the way that guard told me to head. So off I go. So I will see you all in a bit. Your money or your life. Easily. Guys, here I am. I made it to where I am supposed to be at Wainan Priory. So now I must go and speak with Joffrey. Yes? Can I help you? He's upstairs. Go ahead. Joffrey, it's time to cook. I'm Brother Joffrey. What do you want? This cannot be. No one but the Emperor is permitted to handle the amulet. Let me see it. By the Nine, this is the Amulet of Kings. Who are you? How did you get this? What do you know of the Emperor's death? As unlikely as your story sounds, I believe you. Only the strange destiny of Uriel Septim could have brought you to me carrying the Amulet of Kings. His meaning is unclear to me as well. The Emperor seemed to perceive some threat from the demonic world of Oblivion. The Prince of Destruction, Merun's Dagon, is one of the Lords of Oblivion. But the mortal world is protected from the Daedra of Oblivion by magical barriers. I'm not sure. Only the Emperors truly understand the meaning behind the rituals of coronation. The Amulet of Kings is ancient. Saint Alicia herself received it from the gods. It is a holy relic of great power. When an Emperor is crowned, he uses the amulet to light the dragon fires at the Temple of the One in the Imperial City. With the Emperor dead and no new heir crowned, the dragon fires in the temple will be dark for the first time in centuries. It may be that the dragon fires protected us from a threat that only the Emperor was aware of. I am one of the few who know of his existence. Many years ago, I served as captain of Uriel's bodyguards, the Blades. One night, Uriel called me into his private chambers. A baby boy lay sleeping in a basket. Uriel told me to deliver him somewhere safe. He never told me anything else about the baby, but I knew it was his son. From time to time, he would ask about the child's progress. Now it seems that this illegitimate son is the heir to the Septim throne, if he yet lives. His name is Martin. He serves Akatosh in the chapel in the city of Kvach, south of here. 
you must go to Kvatch and find him at once. If the enemy is aware of his existence, as seems likely, he is in terrible danger. And please, let me know if there's anything you need. My resources here are limited, but I will help in any way I can. All right, well, since I just got out of prison and I walked a very long way, I am going I to I keep a few things here in assistance. my chest to resupply traveling blades. Help yourself to whatever you need. All right, Joffrey, let's see what you have. Steel arrows, all right. A steel bow, blade two-handed, and I'll pass on that. Iron, really don't want anything heavy. Leather, leather, yes. I'll take leather armor. about takes care of that. Now I need to go and find Martin. And he is in the city of Kavach. So we're here on the outskirts of Coral. city of Kavach is all the way down here. So that is a really, really long walk. So I believe I'm going to make this a two-parter. So I'm going to call it quits here for now. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, for part two, I will hopefully be in Kavach here. And we will find Martin and get him to where he needs to be. So I will see you all next time. Peace.